Rick Ware Racing. What do you think of when you hear the name Rick Ware Racing? Many people think of a laughing stock. Of course, over the years, Rick Ware Racing has had some of the worst performing cars in the NASCAR Cup Series. Actually, it was the point where guys like Kyle Busch were calling for some drivers and cars not even to be allowed out there. So you think slow. That's how they've been. They've been a lower third of the pack team for their entire existence. Or maybe you just fully think of a driver, Cody Ware. Cody Ware being there more or less, not because of performance, but because of who he is. What do I think of this? What do I think of Rick Ware Racing heading into 2024? My opinion, I think of potential. Now, why? Why would I think of potential with a team that has rarely, if ever, shown any major increase in performance, speed, you name it? Well, to start with, you got J.J. Yaley last year. Yaley is not going to be a world beater. He's not going to be somebody who's going to lead you to prominence. He's not going to be somebody who is going to be your franchise driver. Joe Gibbs Racing tried that, did not work out. But what he is is a solid veteran presence and still a very talented and knowledgeable driver at that. He is not a scrub. Anyone in the Cup Series is not going to be a horrible driver. And he has something to bring to them that many of their former drivers just didn't. Now, last year, he averaged a 27th position finish, nearly a spot above what Cody Ware was doing before. Not a noticeable or amazing improvement, but a still improvement at that. And he was running in the top 25 during races a lot more. Maybe some of it was strategy. Maybe it was cautions flying the right way. But how often in the past had you seen a Rick Ware car realistically outside of, say, Daytona and Talladega, run inside the top 20 and especially top 25. That's what he did. A baby step. Not a huge giant leap, but a step in the right direction. He was 20th at Bristol Dirt as well after starting third, and he ran in the top 15 and top 10 for much of the night. It wasn't like he just went up there and completely fell to the back like we've seen a lot of Starton Parkers do in the early 2000s and a lot of lucky teams do in the 2010s. He actually somewhat competed. And while it was a race of attrition, in the Coca-Cola 600, he finished 16th on the lead lap. And I don't care what people say about the extra stage and the different wave arounds, lucky dogs, all of that. Finishing on the lead lap in the Coke 600 for any lower end team is a huge accomplishment and it should not be overlooked. Now, for one year so far, they have been part of an RFK technical alliance. RFK finally got their feet underneath them in 2023. And even at that, it was towards the end of 2023. The first year, Brad Keselowski had a pretty dismal year, and he was consistent this season, but noticeably got faster as the season went on, at least to the eye test. Chris Buescher was out to lunch for the first half of the year before his wins, and still was the surprise of the playoffs, even with his success. While it was a bit at super speedways, it was not all at super speedways. The team overall showed more signs of life than any Roush-affiliated team has shown since what, 2014? That is something that should be noted as well. And being allianced with them, well, that is something that will help this team over time. Because from the sounds of it, from both the Roush and Rick Ware side, both of these teams have been working hard together and swapping notes. That will help on the speed charts come 2024. It's not going to be an immediate boost up in performance. RFK, with Brad Keselowski's presence being much bigger in the last two seasons, only just now started having an increase in performance. 2024 might be a small change again to the right direction, but it might be 2025 or 26 before we see any noticeable and substantial change with this organization. There will be an effect, though. It's going to be clear improvement that is expected out of this team. So much so that over the offseason, NASCAR did not remove their charter when they could have. 
They could have easily removed the Rick Ware Charter and just said you're not performing and we got to change stuff up. But because they showed a clear and reasonable reason for NASCAR to expect them to improve, NASCAR gifted them the ability to keep their charter. That kind of industry support or at least belief that they'll do better also was fueled in part due to their new driver, Justin Haley who just by signing with the team has become the best driver in Rick Ware racing history on the NASCAR side. And he's expected to be in the number 51 car, the flagship car of the organization, in 2024 on a multi-year deal. He left from Colleague, a place that honestly he could have been the franchise guy and he was a great fit in to try and do something new. And while I don't see him really performing better than he did at Colleague, which wasn't all that great in all honesty, I do expect him to perform better than any Rick Ware driver has ever performed before, possibly getting them their first ever full season, top 25 average finish season. And that is something that I don't think any of us would have expected in, say, 2018-19. This team is quietly wanting to move from that back third to maybe the middle of the pack, which for a team that has struggled as much as them is something that should be applauded. It's not very often you see many of these teams that are basically start and park organizations at their start push up the ranks like this. Most of them go out of business, sell their charters, do whatever. A very good comparison would be live fast. LiveFast started out the same way Rick Ware Racing did. They showed a little bit of improvement on the speed chart, but when it came to the results, nothing really was shown, and they had to sell off their charter over the 2023 season. Now they will be more than likely a part-time, if not competing at all, team in 2024. Whereas Rick Ware Racing, in all aspects, is showing progress. And I think they need to do a few things in order to keep what little momentum they have built going and maybe helping it blossom into bigger momentum. First off, you need to build behind Justin Haley. He is a young driver who has a lot of potential over time, and he has shown his skills in the Xfinity Series at Colleague and at different moments in the Cup Series at Colleague as well. Build around him, get him good sponsorship, get him good publicity, and give him good cars, and maybe he can live this organization even one day to a top 20 organization. They also need to keep J.J. Yaley in the other car. He's not a world beater. He may not even get a top 25 outside of the super speedways very much, but he is somebody who has that veteran presence that can help Justin Haley and an organization like this improve in ways that Otherwise, they probably wouldn't even know how to do or would struggle to get to the point as quickly as some would say as Yaley would be able to do. Also, do not put Cody Ware in these cars. I know that his father owns the organization. I know that it's basically been his playground the last couple years. But legal stuff aside, I'm not going to get into that part. Cody Ware has not shown the ability to improve as a driver to the point that he deserves to be in over either of these guys. Cody Ware just is not as good of a driver as J.J. Yaley or Justin Haley, and I think that he would weigh the organization's efforts and momentum down over time rather than help it out. And right now, business needs to come above family when it comes to this race team. This team needs drivers who are competent and will not tear up equipment. And unfortunately, that's not what Cody Ware has been over his NASCAR career. But with that, I want to pass it on to you and ask, how do you think Rick Ware Racing will perform in 2024 and beyond? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support. And until next time, have a good one.